Welcome to Boomer Tech Adventures presentation of Taking Awesome Photos, Tips for Taking Terrific Pictures with Your iPhone's Camera. This is a preview of a Boomer Tech Adventures course of, by the same name, developed by colleague Jill Spencer. Here is the Boomer Tech Adventures crew you'll see and hear from today. Uh, Jill Spencer on the left, I'm Ed Brzee in the middle, and colleague Chris Toy on the right. This was a live Zoom presentation in Maine Senior Guides Cabin Fever Reliever event in late February 2021. We've recorded it for your pleasure. Uh, Jill just started talking about the topics in this presentation, and that'll be the first slide you see, and we join her in progress. I find that often people really aren't sure what that's all about. And I'm um, going to finish up with some hints from composing. And uh, then there's a bonus. All right. So let's start with the camera icons. Now, this is a screenshot of my iPhone. Yours may look a little differently. And Barbara, you're... Um, Android is, is going to look different, but I think everything is still there somewhere. So you may have to look around your screen to find things. Okay? I have an iPhone. It looks just like that. Yeah. Some of them do. And I, you know, I use them and then somebody comes in with a brand new iPhone and it looks different. I go, oh, well, do I have to buy a new iPhone? <laughs> All right. So let's start in the top row up here. You can see my cursor. That's the lightning bolt. That's your flash. Over next to that is HDR, which stands for high dynamic range. And I'm going to explain what, why you might want to use that and when you might want to use it in a little bit. These three concentric circles are yellow. If they're turned on, they're white. If they're not, that's for the live photos. If you don't see it, it may be that you have to turn them on in their settings. We'll go there in a minute. This thing that looks like a clock is indeed the timer. So you can be in the picture. And these three intersecting circles, uh, on some phones they're called filters, on others they're called effects. They're really fun. You can give a different look and I'll show you that in a minute. Any question, is everybody be able to locate the lightning bolt, HDR, the circles? Um, Elaine, I'm not sure that Android has the live photos, so you may not have that, but I bet you have a timer and I bet you have uh, effects. So you may have to, Elaine, you may have to um, hit the little gear uh, for settings. So let's just talk very briefly about HDR and live photos. And later in the session, I'm going to go and show you examples. So HDR, high dynamic range, what that does, it helps you reduce shadows in bright sunlight. You know, when you're taking a picture of a grandchild or friends and you're in the sunlight, you're thinking, oh, this should be great. But then you notice there's shadows on their face. Well. If you make sure HDR is on, uh, that can help with the shadows. It's also great with sunset and probably sunrise pictures too. It, it improves the contrast so that you just don't get a big black blob where the land is. So it's fun to play around with. And if you're taking pictures inside with um, windows behind you, it will also bring out the details on the face, um, even if you're backlit. And like I said, I'm going to show you some examples in a little bit. Live photo. I don't know if you've ever opened your photos app and you look real quick and mm -hmm. the photo moves. And you're yep. thinking, what am I going out of my mind? Well, that's live photos. That's because <clears throat> there's actually a 1.5 second video before and after the still photo. And that's why you see movement when you open in the Photos app. If you send it to somebody, they're not going to see that movement. 
you want to think about when you want to use it because what it does is it provides a context. So if you're doing a picture by a brook that's gurgling uh, or moving pets or a windy situation, you might want to make sure your live photos are on because it just gives you a little bit more detail. Okay. Now the timer, once you tap that, you're going to have an option to do three seconds or 10 seconds. And it depends how fast you are if you want to be in the picture. If you can leap over a table in three seconds, then you can set it for th three seconds. But most of us need to set it for 10. Once you tap on the 10, you then tap on the shutter and get yourself in the picture. The other thing is it's good to use a timer um, it's one way to um, make sure that you take a steady picture and things don't get blurred. So you can play around with that. And then uh, over, as I said, on the far right, at least in this picture, if you're using an iPad, it's going to be in a different place. Uh, you see the filters or the effects and you can change the appearance of your picture. In fact, you can change a color image to a black and white. You cannot go the opposite way. You can, well, you can't take a black and white picture. But you know, some pictures look really uh, very cool if they are in black and white. You can also do this in uh, editing, but that's tomorrow's presentation. So I'm not going to talk about that. So any questions about that top row? Jill, I don't have HDR on my iPhone 8. Okay, it's probably not turned on and we're going to go to settings in a few minutes and you'll be able to see what your options are. Okay. okay? Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, so we're going to finish the icons uh, first. So now we're down at the bottom and there are two rows at the bottom. Um, the top row at the bottom is the types of images. And you can see there's a whole list. Some of you will have portrait and some of you won't. I think the eights have portrait. If you have something earlier than an eight, I don't think you have that option. But you should have the other ones. And some of them are video, and some of them are still. Then under those choices, Starting over on the left, you see the little square. And that is your thumbnail that shows you what you just took. And if you tap on that, you'll see it. And if you decide you don't like it, you can trash it right then. I mean, that's the beauty of digital photography. You don't have to pay for pictures that you don't like. You just trash them. Then, of course, in the middle is the shutter. And as, as Chris has uh, taught me, that you don't need to stab it. I used to stab it, and of course, then I got a blurred picture. But it doesn't really release until you take your finger off. So it just needs a light tap. And then uh, over on the right, at least on this particular iPhone, is the camera direction. And if you've never played with your camera direction, go ahead and tap it right now. And uh, the first time I show people that, they, they go a little crazy because uh, <laughs> suddenly you see yourself up close and personal. So those are the, the icons. Any questions? I think I missed what you said under thumbnail. Okay, so do you see the thumbnail over on the oh, yeah. left? Oh, yeah, you can trash right away. That's yeah, you can trash okay. right if you'd, yeah. Okay, thank and you. And you can see the pictures you've taken recently. Okay. Okay. So let's just take a minute and leave the camera app and go to settings. Now, if you're on an iPhone or an iPad, you need to go back to your home screen and you need to tap on the settings icon, which looks like a gear. And then you need to scroll down to camera and tap on that. Uh, Elaine, you sh your camera settings, at least on the Androids I've used, are right in the 
camera app and you look for that little gear and that should show you um, what options you have. So this is for the iPhone people. Uh, if you have gone to settings, let me get there while I'm talking. If you go to settings and you scroll down to camera and you tap on it, you'll see a lot of options. Uh, the first one there says pre preserve settings. If you tap on that, one of your options is live photos. And if, if it's not green, that it's turned on. If you think you would like to play around with live photos, you just need to tap on that button and it'll turn green. And when you go back to your camera app, uh, you will see those concentric circles. Then um, if you go back a screen, you'll notice that I have the grid turned on and you may notice it in some of the pictures I show you. That helps you with composition. It does not show up in your pictures in photos, but while you're trying to compose a picture, the grid can be uh, really helpful. Those of you with newer cameras or newer um, phones, you probably want to have scan QR, QR codes turned on us also, which means if you are looking at a QR code, those are the squares, black and white squares, you can just use your camera app to read it. And then um, HDR, it may say different things on yours, but um, if they're blanked out like they are on the screen, then HDR will not show up. Uh, if you want to turn it on, then you need to turn it on here in settings. And if you use auto HDR, that means you don't have to think about it. The software will do it. Okay. Now I'm just going to pause there a second. Any questions on settings? And Elaine, are you finding some options on your Android? Um, yes, I'm all set. Okay, good. Because that's good. Any questions on settings from the I iPhone people? I know. I do. I do. Okay. Uh, do you recommend leaving it on auto for HDR? Uh, I think while you're trying to get used to it, you might. And then you, I think it depends. There's no right answer. It depends on what you want to do. If you want to be more in charge of the exposure on your camera app, then uh, you will control it in the camera app. If you don't want to worry about that, then I'd leave it on auto. Okay, okay. thank you. And you can always change it. I mean, that's the great thing. You can always go in and change it. Okay. I have a question, please. Um, what yes. is the mirror front photos? Mirror front photos. Yeah, mirror front, oh, mirror front camera. Oh. That's got to be um, like you're looking, if you tap on it, it's got to be like you're looking in a mirror. Is that Elaine? I can't tell who's talking, so. Oh, um, that, that was me, the Dory. Dory, okay. Yeah. I've Jill, never seen, I've never Jill, seen. it's Peggy. Just, uh, and I yeah. think I know what that is because sometimes you'll see someone who has taken uh, a video of themselves and using their phone and um, the, um, they'll have a, a shirt on with writing on it and oh. it comes out backwards. Yes, so it's... that you can change that setting so that the, the writing will come out correctly. Otherwise you look as huh. though you are looking in a mirror. And I think that's oh, what that is. That's cool. You know, it's sitting here right in front of me and I have, I'm gonna turn it on. Thank you. 
<laughs> Let's see, see if that does anything. Yeah. Yeah. I bet that's exactly what it does. Because when you do take a picture, things reverse. Thank you. Thank you. See, all of us are smarter than any one of us for thank sure. You, thank you. <laughs> all right. So you have um, three basic types of stills. Uh, the regular, which is uh, the rectangular. Landscape is when it's on the horizontal, when you're holding your phone horizontally. And portrait is when you're holding it vertically. The square is exactly what it says. Uh, the recommendation is if you post to social media, you should choose the square because sometimes the regular gets clipped when they're posted. So if you do the square, it's less likely to be cropped when you post to Facebook. Not a guarantee, but less likely. Hmm. And then there's the panoramic, which I'll show you how to take in just a second in case you've never taken one. Jill? And yes? It's Peggy, uh, annoying Peggy again. No, you know, uh, no. I, when I, um, I have a, a 12, a iPhone 12, and when I upgraded to the 12, the option for square photos is gone. Oh, interesting. So, uh, yes. And so now uh, I, and it was, I was having that issue because Instagram, um, oh, sorry, I'm on low power. I will keep trying. I'll go plug in. But uh, when I was on Instagram, I would, um, I thought, well, how do I get my pictures to be the right size? Yeah. Um, so if you look on Instagram, there is a tiny little uh, kind of on the lower left hand side, an arrow that allows you to change the shape of your photo from uh, square to the more correct shape that you might have been yeah. hoping to use. Okay, does that good. make sense? Yes, it did. I mean, I have a 10. Ed has an 11. Chris, it has a 12. Does your 12 also not have the square? It doesn't have the square. Uh, but if you want it square, you can hit the edit. And yeah. then in the crop, <clears throat> you can choose square and it'll crop it. And then there you can position, you know, where you want in that crop square so you can kind of pre format you know to a square before you send it to instagram the yep. other option is uh, uploading a picture to canva.com which is a free account and there they have templates for all the different social media so but that's, that's interesting I'd, I'd be interested to wish i was old fly in the wall to hear their conversation on why they got rid of the square. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Can Jill, you spell Jill. that web address you just mentioned? Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, Chris, Okay. Yeah. thank you. Yeah, I remember Peggy is exactly right on that. Uh, when I had a 6S, when I moved up to the 11, I lost that setting just as Peggy mm -hmm. described, so. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting, okay. So Elaine, it's a little different in an Android. Um, I'm not sure that your Android will look like this because all the Androids are different depending on the uh, manufacturer. But you've got some choices also. Yeah, someone has raised their hand, uh, Zoom user? Yes, that's Peggy. Oh, okay. Peggy? Yeah, I, that was what I, I, I raised my hand because I had that comment to make. And then I just interrupted like the rudest child ever. <laughs> no, no, we're small enough that you can do that. Don't worry about it. I was a middle school teacher. Nothing phases me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in case you've never taken a panoramic, this is how you do it. And I'd like, if you can, try it out. So the first thing is you have to, of course, choose panoramic on your phone, on your camera app. And unless they've changed things, you need to, which we've just seen that they do. Um, it seems like sometimes I feel like I need to have 14 different iPhones in order to do a session like this. 
<laughs> anyway, you need to keep it in portrait position, upright, vertical. And you point your camera to where you want to start. Okay. And you just gently tap the shutter once and it will turn to a square like in the picture. And then you're going to slowly sweep across your panoramic. And you will notice in the picture, there is a yellow line and a white arrow. And you want to keep that arrow on that line. And if you go too quickly, you'll get a message, slow down. And if you go too slowly, you'll get a message, speed up. That's not exactly what it says. But anyway, you sweep, keeping that arrow as much on that line as you can. And when you're done, when you've got to the end of where you want your panoramic to finish, you tap the shutter one more time. And they're really kind of fun to take. Um, you know, I can never get the whole family in. This is obviously taken in COVID time. I can't get the whole family in at my table. So I can do a panorama. Of so course, you can do a 360 then also? No, um, no. Mm -mm. no. I no. can't turn around? No. No, you, no. you can do about a 180. Yeah, 180. Okay. You probably okay. can find, I know you can, you can find a, a third person, you know, if you go to the app store, I'm sure you can find an app that does 380. I don't happen to have one. No, no, I, I, no need to, I just wondered. Um, yeah. 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 Interesting, thank you. And of course, when you're traveling, you really, I mean, they really help you capture the sense of where you are. And in the middle of winter, I sort of wish I was back in Luca having lunch. Mm. Now, I want to show you this one and I want to see who figures out what the joke is or what the funny thing is. So this is Thanksgiving prep uh, two years ago. What the joke is? Yeah, there's a little funny thing there. Is there one person Somebody. in two places? Is there what? Is there one person in two places? Well, she has three arms. <laughs> um, she okay. moved. Oh. She moved mm. while I was taking the panoramic. So her arm got taken twice. So you, if you're going to take it with people, you got to tell them, hold still. <laughs> <laughs> because you can get these distortions, which again are kind of fun. Uh, but um they uh, if you're taking a formal kind of thing that you're going to put on a christmas card or something or a birthday card uh or hanukkah card you want to um make sure that people are holding still i did one <laughs> where somebody turned their head and i had like the roman god janice their face was going <laughs> in two different directions <laughs> so it's kind of fun to do uh but uh if it's going to be something that you're going to use you want to tell people to stand to stay still it doesn't take long all right now some of you have portraits um and this is fun to do if you are uh wanting to take a picture probably of one or two people and you have choices of lighting and you see them listed there and if you look at the black arrow here that when you touch portrait and touch up here, at least on mine, this little semicircle comes up and you can work your way through and see what you like. Now I'll show you some um, examples. So this is Teddy. On the left, this is natural light. And um, you can see that because he is, the focus is on him, the background is all fuzzy. So that's one of the thing portrait does is it really focuses on the face. Now this is studio light and you see there's a difference in the coloring, not a whole lot here, but it's, uh, it's a little different. And um, again, you need to kind of play with it. Stage light is fun in that it gives you a back, a black background. And then you can also take in a, um, in a mono, a black and white. 
So it, it's fun to uh, play around with, take some pictures. Uh, again, you can easily get rid of the ones you don't like. Jill, yeah? are you going to are you going to talk about the F stop? No. Would you like to? Um, I don't have that on mine. You you might very well. Um, and Where do I'm I find just, it? I'm just going to look. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm looking at your screen again, and um, up at the top on the right hand side on portrait mode. Yeah. Um, With those look three for dots? a tiny a tiny uh, F. Huh. Let me go there. Okay, there should there should the... be a, t a tiny little F up there up on the right hand side. The bad part right now is that I'm on my phone, so I can't actually look at what it looks like. But um, yeah, no, the ten doesn't have that. Hmm. Um, Ed, do you have it, Chris? I do. I don't see it. You you should have it, Chris. Yeah, Chris should have it, and and the eleven should have it. I. I think I had it on my 10. Um, it may be a setting you have to enable, but um, yeah, let me go to it's, settings. It's in the portrait mode. What it does, you mentioned something that it does. Um, and the F stop changes how much light is coming in. Yeah. And so you, it allows you to pop the background really out of focus. So yeah. you can change it down to, I think at F1.4, but I may yeah. be wrong. Or you can really pump it up to like F16 and really go for a lot of focus. Oh, that's neat. I um, have a, a 10X, which yeah. they, they took out of production like six months after I bought it. The other yes, 10s may it. have it. Chris has got it on his 12. I had it on yeah. my 10X. You did? Interesting. Huh. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a... I'm not saying yeah. Well. yeah, and it gives you, um, if you tap on it, it actually at the top, it'll tell you, like I'm in a pretty dark area, and it will actually say that you need more light. And it'll tell you whether to turn the flash on. But then there's also a slider on the bottom, right. which also yeah. lets you kind of change, change that. So yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That is cool. Thank you. I'm not seeing that. Oh, good. You're giving me reasons why I'm going to have to get a new camera, a new phone. Oh, uh, you needed you... a reason? <laughs> <laughs> so those of you with sixes and eights, you're not going to have that option. Sorry. <laughs> you like All right. However, some of you also have the night feature. Um, my 10 doesn't. The 11 does. The 12 does. Um, I don't know if any, so in case you're thinking about upgrading, what it does, you can see there's a moon little icon. And when uh, you need to activate that, it gets brighter. And it allows you to take pictures in the dark. So you can, using your old phone, you can still take pictures up close and personal in the dark using your flash or sometimes I have a headlamp on. But let me show you, this is from Chris's 12, which is kind of, so the picture on the left, he's not using the night function. And then you see it on the right where he is. And you can see, you can see a lot more detail in the background, his face, uh, well, just a lot more detail everywhere. So uh, if you have that on your phone, but I don't, think anybody other than Peg, Ed, and Chris have that. So moving on. <laughs> Jill, just, just yeah? a quick, we're picking up some uh, feedback from somebody. Would, would everybody just mind um, muting your audio and then come off to ask questions? Thank you. There we go. Great. Thank you. Like I said, as a middle school teacher, it was, I wasn't even conscious of that. <laughs> All right, so let's look at your video options. Uh, you can take a straight video, which you've probably all done. You can do a slow-mo or you can do time-lapse. And again, with the video, you've got 
the shutter will be red this time and you tap it and when you're done you tap it, it, it'll go to a square and then you tap it again so the thing about slow-mo is it doesn't start immediately at least it doesn't on my camera on the newer cameras maybe it starts a little more quickly but let me just show you i hope this comes through okay so see how it slows down is the video coming through Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you can see. So, so anybody that plays golf or tennis, this is a really great way to analyze your swing. Um, it's also fun to do with grandchildren. But you, and uh, you just have to remember that it doesn't start right away. It takes it a little bit to kick in. And then the time lapse, which I think is a lot of fun. I don't know if you remember, I'm probably the oldest one here, uh, when kids go into the drive-in and there was always a Disney short before the main feature and it would have the flower opening or it would have something happening in nature. Well, that's what time-lapse does. Um, it condenses a video into a few seconds. So um, if you look way at the back here, when I start the video at the bird feeder and watch this railing, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, see all the birds going a little crazy. So what I did is I started it and put it up against the screen in my bathroom, which looks out onto the deck, and I left it for 10 minutes. And then I came back and I stopped it and I had the time lapse software condenses it into a short amount of time. So that's kind of fun. Uh, if you've looked on Facebook when they're showing how to make something, uh, lots of times they'll use the time lapse to uh, have it go real fast, uh, too fast for anybody to keep up. So those are the main types of images and videos you can take. Is there any questions before I go on? Nobody sees, okay, moving on. Everyone's so, muted. Everyone's <laughs> muted. Oh, I wish I'd had that button in class. <laughs> All right. So one of the problems um, that people often have with the camera app is that things get blurry and you can see there's a picture there and that happens for a lot of reasons sometimes it's just difficult to hold it still sometimes it's windy uh, sometimes uh, somebody hits your arm well i'm gonna suggest a couple of solutions the first one has to do with how you actually hold your device and uh, this comes from a young man who has a site called the iPhone Photo School. And what he suggests, you can see I've wrapped one hand around the back and then I've supported it with the other. And then I use my thumb to uh, I don't know if I can I used my thumb for the shutter. But that way I'm supporting my hand and so I'm less likely to shake. Now, of course, if I can lean up against something, that's really helpful too, or I can lean the phone against something. But you can use tripods. And the picture on the left, this is a traditional tripod that we use with the full-size camera. But you see, I have this little doohickey or connector. And this is off my uh, $6 selfie stick, which lasted about as long as you would expect a $6 selfie stick. But what it does, it allows me to uh, clip or clamp my phone into um, the connector. And then the connector has the screw or the hole where the tripod screw goes up. The other, is actually this, is there are a variety of different little tripods you can get. And they usually all come with a connector. That's one um, 
this is an, this was an impulse buy that I can wrap around something. And you can see there's the clamp that I put the iPhone in. And this one's a little steadier, but again, there's the, the little doohickey that goes right into it. And they will help you um, have a more steady handhold on taking pictures. However, I want to know how many people know that there are three additional ways to trip the shutter. One is your volume button. Thank you. And I'll let you try it. If you use, if you have your camera app open, you can use your volume button to uh, trip the shutter. And that is sometimes far more convenient than actually hitting the shutter. So if you were taking a picture like this and maybe scooching down, I should have my volume. Um, it is six, let me open my, okay, so see how it flicked? And so that just makes it a little easier. The second is my earbuds, which I have plugged into the computer, so I'm not going to use them right now. You can also use the volume buttons on those to take a picture. And again, you're less likely to shake your camera. And again, the third is the timer. So those are three alternative ways to using the regular shutter. And uh, again, if we were in a person-to-person -person class, I'd send you, well, not outside tonight, but <laughs> I'd send you around the room and have you try it out. Uh, but it's something um, I forget to do sometimes. And then I'm, you know, I'm in this weird position. I'm thinking, Jill, why don't you use the volume button? And it makes it much easier. Jill, excuse me. How did you explain this earbuds? Yeah, okay, so um, on the earbuds, there is the volume control and it will take yeah. a picture if I, okay. Oh, and if I can, uh, oh, yeah. that's, that sounds great. Well, Thank you. Wow. So that's pretty cool. Now, here's what I think is probably the most important thing, is your focus. Now, the software on the phone looks for the middle distance. And so things in the background or things in the foreground yeah, may not be as sharp. They may not be obviously fuzzy, but maybe not as sharp as they could be. But if you look at your phone, and even if you're on Zoom right now, you can go to, you, you can open your um, photos app without, you'll be able to hear me, you won't be able to see me. You can always come back. But when you open your photos app and you touch your screen, there is a faint yellow box. It's not as bright as that one that you see there. I've put that in to just highlight where it is. And if you tap the screen, Screen, it will move around. And so what you want to do is you want to choose what you want to be most in focus. The Android, some of them are circles and some of them are squares, but it's the same idea. You move it around, just touch your screen where you want it to be in focus. So for example, if you're taking um, oh, a picture of a flower, or a pet, and you don't want people distracted by the background, if you touch where that main focus is, the background will blur. So that's a pretty neat thing to be able to do. And if you hold your finger down on that yellow box, you will get this little signal up here that says AEAF. That stands for automatic exposure, automatic focus. And that you would use 
if you were taking multiple pictures of the same place, and maybe there are people walking through or maybe there are animals walking through, but you want the focus and the exposure to be the same, you can tap, hold your finger down on the box and that will um, engage. And then you just tap again and it goes away. Now, I don't know if you can see, but right in here, there's something that looks like a little sun. Well, this helps you control exposure. All right, so this is a cartoon version of it. And if you have your phone camera app open or your iPad, same thing on the iPad, and you slide your finger up and down, you will notice that the light gets brighter and darker. So I have a story to share. And the androids, the sliders usually at the bottom from what I've been told. Um, so I was teaching adult ed and this woman said, oh, let me, I've just got to share this story. And she and her friends were in New York City for the big girls weekend. And they're coming home and they were in, in I think Central Station uh, Grand Central, and they were trying to get, you know, a selfie of them, but it was too dark. And this woman comes up to them and says, are you trying to take a picture of yourself? Yeah, yeah, but it's too dark. She said, well, do you know? And she explained to them about the exposure and they were able to lighten it and get a good picture. And so they said to her, oh, would you take the picture for us? And she said, oh, no, I, I can't do that. Well, it turned out it was Annie Leibovitz the uh, professional, very famous professional yeah. photographer. And of course, she's not going to take a picture of anybody um, that they might then said that's an Annie Leibovitz picture. <laughs> but again, when you, especially when you're inside, um, or if it's getting towards dusk and you don't have that night feature, you can play with that exposure. And or if you're outside and it's too bright, then you can bring it down. Now the example I have is here, this picture on the left. I was up in, um, we were having a family vacation uh, in um, the San Juan Islands up in Puget Sound. And it was a gorgeous sunset. Um, there was a lot of stuff in the atmosphere because of the fires up in British Columbia. And I took this picture and I was really, disappointed. Although it was pretty, it just wasn't nearly as vibrant. So I said, hmm, I'm going to put my yellow square on the sun. And then I fiddled with the exposure. And although this picture is still not quite as vibrant, it is much better. If you look at the orange here, it is much different. And I got more of the color. Um, I'm still trying to get the perfect picture of the moon. And I've read that again, you focus on the moon and you bring your exposure down. I have yet to get a picture I'm happy with. How about the rest of you? Has anybody successfully taken a beautiful picture of a full moon with your iPhone camera? No. <laughs> so far I've been happy, but what you're teaching us today so you play around I will with it use some it more. the next full moon yeah. rise in Cape Harpus. <laughs> okay. A beautiful place to take moonrise. All right. Um, let's move on. So I mentioned live photos before, and unfortunately I can't demonstrate them. They don't show up too well. Though I do have tomorrow night, I spend more time on it. But like I said, what it does is it uh, shows context the still frame is in the middle. And so I, my family would kill me if I um, showed, the, if they knew I was showing this picture because everybody looks terrible in it. Um, but what was happening, Megan was twirling, yeah. Ella was, everybody was eating. Um, and so you really don't get the context, but it is fun to play around with. I always forget to take it off, it's, turn it off, because most of the time you don't need it on. But it's no big deal if you forget to turn it off. Uh, but again, uh, you can play around with the live 
um, in settings and um, also on your camera app. It's yellow. When it's yellow, it's on. If it's not yellow, it's not. But I will spend more time with HDR because I think this really does give us um, some interesting things that we can try. As I said, what it stands for high dynamic range. And evidently, this is the amount of light a human eye or a camera sensor can pick up. Now, on Apple products, and I'm pretty sure it's the same on the Android, what happens is it takes three pictures. When you have HDR on, it takes three pictures. You don't take three pictures, you take one. But the software has three pictures. One's underexposed, one's overexposed, and one's in the middle. And then the software automatically combines them into what they, it considers the best exposure. And like I said before, it uh, provides more detail in shadows and uh, when light is, when there's a lot of bright light. So when do you want to use it? Well, sunsets and landscape, you might want to play around. As I min mentioned before, bright sunny days, uh, it eliminates shiny spots and the low light or backlit situation. So let me show you an example. So this is from my garden, which is in a shady spot that the sun does hit. I have it on in this picture in the left and off here. Do you notice when I don't have it on how the day lily is washed out? So are uh, this little foliage and um, back here, there's not as much detail. When I have it on, you see the full color of the day lily, this little foliage, which I should know the name of, but I don't, uh, is more true to form. And I think the hosta looks better also. So again, should you have it on all the time? If you have it turned on to do it automatically, you don't have to worry about it. If you're one who likes to play around, um, then um, you can do it manually. You don't want to use it if you're trying to take a picture of motion, like if you're taking a soccer game. Uh, because of the three pictures, you get ghost images. Sometimes you do want the contrast. Um, sometimes vivid colors get washed out and you can't use it with flash. Um, so you either use your flash or you use your HDR. Again, but the cool thing is you can experiment. Just go there. Um, the warnings with HDR is that it takes longer and it takes up more spare storage space, though you have some choice in settings there if you go back and look. Now, can I tell that it takes longer to take the picture? No, <laughs> but somebody um, better tuned than me probably can. Okay, so before I go on to hints, a couple of hints for composing, any questions about HDR, live, um, focus and exposure? Okay, I'm seeing that we're coming close. So um, I'm gonna do this next part rather rapidly because um, it's almost eight o'clock, but so hints for composing. These are taken from the professionals. None of all of us like to take pictures, but none of us uh, are making our living selling our pictures. Uh, so um, it's just kind of fun to research what the professionals say, the professional artists and the professional photographers. So this first one has to do with why I have the grid on. And the professionals will tell us, unless you're taking a portrait, don't stick the main topic of your picture or the main focus right smack dab in the middle. Put it at one of the crosshairs on the grid. And you see this wonderful picture that Chris took um, 
of the dragon's face. Notice the eye is up there in the upper left hand corner. And our eyes are immediately drawn to that. And then the, the teeth, the mouth, is down at the, um, the lower right hand quadrant. So if he had taken that straight on, uh, it might have been an interesting picture. But this, the way he's framed it, it really is a very nice uh, eye catching composition where your eye is drawn to some of the details of the dragon. And then on the, um, the right hand, you can see the hummingbird, again, not centered, uh, but using the grid to uh, show its motion, um, show how small it is in proportion to other things. The second is uh, leading lines. This is, if you've taken art classes, you talk about, the, the artists will talk about it. If you look at your landscape um, paintings, there's often something that draws your eye into the picture, into the image. The one on the left is um, a log walkway. And don't you just see yourself going right into um, the forest? It really is a great focal point. And Chris took this one, um, I know it's in Asia. Chris, you wanna tell people about? Um... Sure. Um, so that was in the uh, port city. Uh, you're talking about the blue, the, the, yes. the blue one? Yeah. Yeah, that was the port city of Yokohama. And that was taken right at sunrise. And, um, and those are actually, it's an art installation. And I just saw that line heading, that, that's out, goes out into the harbor and is on a pier. So that actually goes out to water. Um, but then I saw the sun rising at the end of that. So I said, oh, there's a nice picture. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, those, I mean, again, if you look at it, those blue uh, screens just take you, like you said, right to the sunrise. So again, it's something um, to think about. And uh, I'll just show you those real quickly. These are from Maine. This is Winslow Park. You can see in this case, there's lines and then the um, stone wall that continues. This is down. If you're ever looking for a good lobster roll this summer, Erica's in South Harpswell. Uh, this is their dock. But again, the leading lines take you out. So it's just kind of fun to think about your composition. Uh, a third thing to think about, again, unless you are actually taking a portrait, is to try to get your subject's view off camera, not looking right at you. Um, and so on the left, uh, that's Chris's wife, Joan. And um, I think she's probably looking at some bird of prey out on Mary Meeting Bay. But that story tells a picture. I would tell that picture tells a story. I just reversed it. Mm. That picture tells a story. Same with the uh, the person who needs parts for a spaceship will work for money. Uh, so think about how you might get your um, subjects to not look directly at you, but to focus on something else. And it doesn't just need to be people. Uh, if you're taking pictures of animals, you may um, want to see if you can capture them looking out. This, this fellow had just had his dinner. Uh, we're not quite sure what it was. And if, you, if I showed you the close up of his face, he had to fight for it because he had quite a few gash marks. So rule of thirds, leading lines, uh, get your gaze off, um, get your subject's gaze looking off. And then the last thing is play around with reflections. I love this picture, 1902, obviously not taken with a smartphone camera. But just look at the reflection of that. Uh, evidently, that's the cliff house. 
which was quite a famous place and outside of San Francisco. I just love the reflection and the reflection of the people. And but we can do this with puddles, windows, curved glass. Uh, so I show you this one. This is my neighborhood. This is not a grand picture, but just look at the difference. So here I'm looking down a street near me and, uh, you know, not very interesting. But when I got down at puddle level, look at all the reflection I got. So even though we're looking at mobile homes and still not a wonderful um, scenic view, but if I were someplace that had more of a scenic view, using the puddle as a reflection, and again, using those um, volume buttons to take the picture, or if I had my earbuds on, so I'm not trying to scrunch down and, and get the shutter, you can, you can play around and have some good times with that. And here's just one where you could again use um, windows or mirrors to double your reflection and have some fun with taking arty kinds of pictures rather than just uh, the standard. Um, and so I'm going to end there um, with a bonus. And I forgot to tell Chris that this was here. Um, so I'm going to let him notice that the bonus is to be ready for truly unique opportunities. And this was taken with an iPhone, correct, Chris? Yep. OK, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, Please? so so um, this is just simply paying attention to the almanac. Um, and this was taken during what's called a super moon. And that's when the moon is physically closest to the Earth. And uh, looking at the almanac, you can look up when is moonrise and moonset going to be, just like, you know, when is the sunrise and sunset going to be. And it just so happened that uh, the moon at, on this particular morning I knew was going to be rising at about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And so I set the alarm and um, I noticed that the moon was going to be, uh, be just behind these, uh, these trees that, and this was, you know, early winter, so there would be no leaves. So um, I did my, you know, with the setting and everything like that and made, and I, I, I put the, um, camera on a tripod <clears throat> so it'd be very still and um i i used the um the settings and i was able to get this picture of the full moon um setting behind these trees so it was, it was kind of cool yeah so it i guess i'm a may i've always liked to take pictures i'm not a particularly good photographer i've always like to take pictures and I every time I use my iPhone um, even my older iPhones amazed that I had this device with this amazing software in my pocket and could um, take uh, at least memorable pictures for me and so I hope you will go out and experiment um, just a little commercial here and then I'm going to turn it over to Ed um, all these tips and more are in our course taking awesome pictures with your iPhone, iPad, camera. Uh, this week is half price, it's $20. And if you come back tomorrow, we're doing the Photos app, which is how that's organized and also how you can uh, edit a not so terrific picture into something pretty spectacular. So before I turn back over to Ed, uh, questions? Jill, this is Barbara. Could yeah. you repeat how you took the picture in Puget Sound to change? Oh, the, yes. Um, yes. Let me go back there. Um, you took two pictures, right? Yes. This first one, I just pointed the, the phone and took the picture. And I was disappointed because mm -hmm. um, things just were not nearly as vibrant. So this time when I took it, 
that yellow square that I talked yep. about, I focused okay. that on the sun. On and the then sun. I fiddled with the exposure a little bit until I got the colors that I wanted. And then I took the picture. Okay. Now I have a question. The picture that we saw of Ed's moon, um, how, uh, not Ed's, I'm sorry, Chris's moon. This one? Um, how did you get a close up? Yeah, how do I get the dis? Oh, I don't know how to. Uh, how could I focus on the right. moon? Right, right, right. So there are two things that, um, and maybe Jill will talk a little bit about them tomorrow. There's taking the picture, but then you can open the photos app. So remember, we're using the camera app to take the picture. Uh, and so you can zoom in on that, right? By, you know, putting your, your thumb and your finger on the screen and, and spreading them to zoom. Okay. Does that make, does that make sense yep. what I'm saying? Okay, yep. so you would take that picture but then, oh. once you have that picture, you can then go into photos and you can I actually see. zoom it some more by cropping. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, the okay. thing to remember is, and you, and you can see it here, is that it's not going to be as sharp. You know, when mm -hmm. you start to yeah. zoom, it's going to start to start to pixelate. You can yep. kind of see that. But I was going, I wasn't going for focus as much as I was going mm -hmm. for that contrast yeah. between the branches and the moon. So I, I zoomed to take the picture, but then I also cropped. To, and, and when you crop, it also In photos. zooms. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks for joining us today. This is Ed Brzee and my colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. We appreciate you letting us know how our Boomer Tech Adventures courses and workshop help you learn more about your iPhone, iPad, and Mac computer. If you like this workshop, you'll love our full course, Taking Awesome Pictures. Like our other courses, it is totally self-paced, and it allows you to work at your own speed. This course is yours to use as long as you want. And remember that you have us, Jill, Chris, and Ed, to ask if you have any questions. We currently have nine courses with more, more courses in the works. As you can see here, we have courses like Introduction to Macintosh, Introduction to Zoom, Introduction to iPhone, several photography courses uh, using your Photos app, and, and more. And you can find us at our website on YouTube where we have more than 130 videos and lots of uh, daily tips on our Facebook page. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you in the next video.